Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 13. Hey, if you want to download this PDF, PDF file, click on the link below the video and you can download uh, Chapter 2 Banks, it's called. Hey, we just want to talk a little bit about banks and a little bit about uh, the financial crisis. Um, first, let's just think about what happens when you deposit money in a bank. So here's us. We're going to deposit 100 bucks. Brrrp but it goes into the bank. Now on our records we record our hundred bucks as an asset. On the bank side, the hundred bucks goes in. Now they have an asset account called cash too, they put it in that. But the account that we're interested in is the fact that they have a liability, right? Deposits payable or whatever it's called. So this hundred dollars, even though to us on our our books, right? It's an asset. On the bank's books, it's a liability because they owe us. So that's going to lead us to the fundamental problem with banks. Here's how banks get cash. We give them uh, deposits, right? And they could be checking, savings, even uh, short-term CDs or even long-term CDs, right? We, all this cash comes in. Most of it's going to be short-term debt. When the bank gets the money from the depositors, they record them as a liability, but they immediately loan it out. They loan it out. And these loans are usually longer term, you know, one year, five year, 10 year. So bank loans long term to people who want to borrow. So long term assets, short term liabilities. That, and you can see the cash flow, lots of little small cash flows coming in. Lots of uh, you know bigger, longer-term cash flows going out. Now, of course, the bank, to these people, they charge 5%. And then over here, they pay 1%. And the difference is how they make a profit. Now, here's how the banks pay out cash, right? We can come and ask for our cash back at any time. Uh, even for longer-term CDs, we can insist that the bank give it to us. Uh, we're going to incur a penalty. But that means that this if everyone decides to pull their cash out at the same time, that could be a problem. That means short-term liabilities, long-term assets are f bringing the cash back in. Now think about this. Over, over here, if everyone decides to take out their cash at the same time, can the bank go over to these people and just say, hey, I need the cash now? Not if it says one year, five year, or 10 years on their loan. They don't have to pay it back till later. So that's ultimately the fundamental problem with the bank. And that's why bank runs occur during financial crisis. Everyone gets scared. They pull out their money. The bank can't go get enough money to pay them back. And then they run out of cash and the, federal, the government has to come in. Also in this financial crisis, what happened? The long-term loans. Well, a lot of them didn't come in, so they didn't have the cash to pay out over here. All right, another thing about uh, banks, the investment banks and the current, the recent financial crisis. There's a great book called The Big Short by Michael Lewis. And basically, the conclusion of the, bo the book is gripping. It's uh, how, well, a lot of things that happened in the financial crisis. But the conclusion of the book basically said this. Hey, Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blankfin, Morgan Stanley CEO Joe Mack, a bunch of these other guys, including Howie Hubler. Uh, he worked in Morgan Stanley. He uh, holds the world record for biggest loss in financial history on a single trade. He lost $9 billion on a single trade. Uh, Lehman Brothers, Richard Fold, uh, AIG, Joe Cassano. Lots more people involved, too. These are just some of the people involved. Now, all of these people have three things in common. They all ran public companies, right? These all had stock. They issued stock. These are the managers inside the company. So what do all these people have in common? They ran public companies into bankruptcy or to the point that the government had to come in and bail them out. Now, get this. These are managers inside the firm. The stockholders are outside. So the stockholders are probably mad that these people ran the companies into bankruptcy. Well, that's Thing number one. Thing number two is they all kept their salaries. They all got paid tons of money. You know, Howie Hubler, not a CEO, but a, a manager in there, lost $9 billion and he still got to keep lots of his uh, bonuses. Uh, Richard Fold had like half a billion dollars that he got from Lehman Brothers. 
So they all kept their monies. Now, if you were the stockholder and your managers crushed your company, would you want to still pay them? Probably not. But that happened. Here's the final thing that happened. Most of these people ended up helping the federal government write new regulation, both in the Bush and the Obama administration. These people and others, n not probably some of these people that were are still working, but some of these people, some of the other people that got the financial system into trouble actually helped write the regulation. So, ran companies into bankruptcy, kept all of their salaries, and then helped write the regulation that was supposed to prevent the financial crisis from happening again. So the questions, not going to answer these, just pose these questions to you. If this is all true, what signal does this send to the market about incentives? If you can run a public company, keep all your money, and then write the regulation. What is that? What signal does that send about incentives? And what does this say about the state of democracy itself? All right, we'll see you next trick.